So you need to measure current voltage and temperature in your next design. But you also want to monitor current voltage and temperature as well and protect current voltage and temperature. Maybe you're working on a battery management system, an automotive design, or a power supply for networking, telecom, or a base station. A high voltage, intelligent battery shunt may be a great way to measure, monitor, and protect temperature, voltage, and current. But where can you find more information about high voltage, intelligent battery shunts? Right here, my friends. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Scott Blackburn from Vache and I explore the what, where, and how of intelligent battery shunts. We also examine the key functions of battery management systems, the electrical characteristics of high voltage intelligent battery shunts, and how you can get started using a high voltage intelligent battery shunt from Vache for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Vache. Hi, Scott. Thank you so much for joining me. It's good to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about high-voltage intelligent battery shunts today. But Scott, before we dig into the details, can you set the stage for us and talk about battery management systems? Yes, sure. We'll get into the intelligent battery shunts a little bit later, but let's start with a little background information. So compared to 20 years ago, we have rechargeable battery powered products just about everywhere from toys to power tools to kitchen appliances. And now we have electric or hybrid cars, trucks, and even flying aircraft. So if you have a rechargeable battery pack, you have some type of battery management systems or BMS for short. And simply put, it's an electronic control circuit that monitors and regulates the safe and efficient charging and discharging of batteries in a system. And that can range from very simple to extremely complicated. And more specifically in the automotive world, it's the heart of any pure battery electric vehicle, hybrid vehicle, or plug-in hybrid vehicle. So Scott, what kind of functions are we talking about when it comes to battery management systems? Well, the BMS actually does a lot behind the scenes, even in the simplest of systems, but all have three major functions that are key to any battery pack. So we have state of charge, we have state of health, and then we have some type of fault protection. So state of charge is an important metric to keep in mind here, right? Correct. And we all take advantage of this function many times throughout the day without even realizing it. So it's basically a metric that describes the quantity of charge remaining in a battery relative to its maximum capacity. So a simple example is a cell phone that shows you the percentage of charge remaining. And in fact, I'm in need of a new cell phone as we speak, so I'm frequently checking how much charge I have left. And that calculation can range from very basic to extremely complicated based on the type of the application or the product. And in the case of an electric vehicle, for example, the state of charge is very critical since it informs the driver how much range they have left before the car shuts down and is no longer operable. So a little bit more important with my electric car than with my cell phone. For sure. Now, we also need to keep in mind the state of health of the battery as well, correct? Yes, state of health is just as important as the state of charge. And state of health is basically another metric that describes the current maximum capacity of a battery relative to its maximum capacity as provided by the battery manufacturer when it's brand new. So in other words, a measure of the overall health of a battery as compared to a fresh battery, you know, you have to factor in conditions like cell aging and cycling and temperature. And so in the case of an electric vehicle, the state of charge is important for understanding battery degradation, optimizing the lifespan, the safety, the performance of the battery. So again, back to my old cell phone, it's state of health's not very good these days. 
as the battery's nowhere near what it was when it was brand new. And again, it's probably more critical with my vehicle than with my cell phone. For sure. Now, I know from previous Chalk Talks that fault protection is also a critical concern here as well. Yes, definitely. Fault protection is probably the most important function as it affects safety and reliability. So the BMS is responsible for monitoring all the possible fault mechanisms, which could be many, to ensure that the battery is operating safely under any set of conditions. So some of those key protection features might be overcharging protection, over temperature protection, over voltage protection, some type of short circuit protection. And then it also has a pre-charge function that's built in, and I'll describe that in a little more detail later. Fantastic. Now, can you walk me through exactly how a battery management system works? Sure, I'd be glad to. So for all the BMS functions we just talked about, we basically need to accurately and precisely measure the voltage, the current, and several temperatures. And then there's sophisticated software algorithms that are used to calculate the state of charge and the state of health. And we also need to balance the cells either passively or actively to equalize the state of charge of each battery cell or group of cells. And this is necessary as the performance of the entire battery pack is often limited by the state of charge of just one weak cell in the pack. And then there's also that pre-charging that I just mentioned. Basically, we're charging uncharged capacitors in the vehicle, and we want to do that by limiting the inrush current so we have a safe and reliable pre-charge function. And that's typically accomplished with a resistor that's temporarily switched into series with the battery pack output current, and that controls the amount of current that goes into the various vehicle electrical loads to prevent any stress or damage. So, Scott, how would we measure voltage here? So there's several ways to do this, but the most common is to use some type of accurate resistor divider, as you can see from the simple schematic circuit here. And we would recommend using the Vachet CDMA series. So this series is capable of withstanding voltages up to 1,415 volts. It's in a 2512 surface mount package, which is a common size. And it has three-sided wraparound terminations, which you can see there in the picture. It's precise to plus or minus 0.5%, and it has low TCR tracking down to 10 ppm per degree C. It's also sulfur resistant, which is critical in a few automotive applications, and it's also qualified to the automotive standards. So what about measuring current? Again, there's several ways to measure current in a system, but we would recommend using an accurate current shunt. So basically, you take advantage of Ohm's law to determine the current based on measuring the voltage drop across a resistor, which has a very low resistance to minimize the power loss. And again, we would suggest the Vachet WSBE series. It has a very high power capability. We can sense currents up to 1,825 amps. It has values down to 15 micro-ohms. It also has a patented construction with low TCR down to plus or minus 10 ppm per degree C so that no temperature compensation is required. And I'll talk about that in more detail a little bit later as well. Also has very low inductance, less than five nanorel Henry's, and it's also automotive qualified. So we also need to measure temperature too, right? Yes, correct. And again, there are several ways to accomplish this, but we would recommend using an NTC thermistor. So, you know, what's a thermistor? It's basically a nonlinear resistor that exhibits a repeatable change in resistance when you have a change in temperature. And it's often used in a voltage divider configuration with another resistor of a known value. And then you measure the output voltage and then plug that into a curve fitting formula to determine the temperature. And you can see here a couple of examples of the curves that were used to calculate the measurements. So what kind of solutions does Vachet offer to measure temperature? Well, it actually depends on the function. So for measuring the individual battery cells or group of cells, we would recommend a leaded package 
such as the Vichet NTCL317 series. So these have a very fast reaction time with a low thermal gradient, which means you get a very quick measurement or response in measurement. It's capable of operating up to 150 degrees C. It's accurate down to plus or minus 0.5 degrees C. And again, automotive qualified. Now, if you want to measure just the ambient temperature inside the battery pack, we would recommend a surface mount package such as the Vichet NTCS series. So these are glass encapsulated for added stability. They have nickel tin terminations. We have tolerances available down to plus or minus 1%. And again, automotive qualified. So let's talk about the high voltage intelligent battery shunts you mentioned earlier. Yes. So the main reason for our talk today, and uh, we just discussed how to measure or monitor current and voltage and temperature so we can calculate the state of charge, the state of health, take care of that fault protection we also talked about. And now you can take these measurements discreetly in different parts of the battery pack, which people do, or you could use an integrated smart solution like the Vichet High Voltage Intelligent Battery Shunt. So you can see a picture of it there. It has a USB interface for communication, uses that WSB E8518 current shunt and that CDMA2512 high voltage resistor divider that we already discussed. And for some of the important features, so it's ACLD capable, which is a safety standard, and that's for critical automotive applications. It also has a TCR of 3 ppm per degree C, which I'll discuss in a little bit more detail shortly. Operating temperatures from minus 65 C up to 170 degrees C. It has a built-in 22-bit analog to digital converter that has a peak error of only 0.006%, which is very, very good. It's configurable to any output signal, analog or digital. And it's available from our authorized distributor, Mauser. Fantastic. Now, Scott, does Vichet offer any supporting materials for these high-voltage intelligent battery shunts? Yes. So there's a corresponding data sheet, which you see here, that you can find on our website, which gives you all the important specs and the application information. For anyone that's interested in a little more detailed information from a hardware perspective, I put together a basic functional block diagram, which you see here. You can see that USB interface on the left-hand side that's referenced to the low voltage ground in the vehicle. And then we have an isolation barrier, and that's noted by that red line, which separates the low voltage circuitry from the high voltage circuitry. That's for safety purposes, so that if we do get a failure in the hardware, a passenger is protected from a potential shock situation. And therefore, any signal or voltage that must be shared between the low voltage and the high voltage side has to go through either a digital isolator or an isolated power supply. Now, on the right-hand side, we have all of the high voltage reference circuitry. So the analog voltage measured across the WSBE current shunt is amplified, it's converted to a digital signal, it then crosses the isolation barrier, and is processed by the controller on the low voltage side. The analog voltage measured from the CDMA resistor, it's also amplified, converted to a digital signal, crosses the isolation barrier as well, and then is processed by the controller on the low voltage side. And then finally, the analog voltage that's measured from the NTC thermistor, that's converted to a frequency, and then that's also sent to the controller via the same isolation method. So that's a little bit more detail on how this intelligent battery shunt actually works. Excellent. So Scott, what kind of electrical characteristics are we talking about here? So this is actually a very interesting feature of the WSBE current shunt that's been patented by Vichet. So all resistors have some type of temperature coefficient, also known as TCR, associated with them. That is, as the temperature increases, the resistance increases to some extent based on the material used in the resistor. So for example, a typical shunt, which is comprised mostly of copper, normally has a fairly high TCR as shown by the blue curve here. 
However, due to the unique Vachet processing and construction, the WSBE shunt has virtually no change in resistance over the entire temperature range, and that's shown by those orange and green curves here. And the reason this is so important is that you don't have to compensate for that change in resistance, which affects the voltage measured across it, and therefore the current that's reported to the controller, either through hardware or software, which can be a significant reduction in the system cost and the complication of your system overall. So therefore, pretty groundbreaking technology that's been developed by Vache. All right. So... Scott, I would imagine that high-voltage intelligent battery shunts would be a good fit for automotive designs in particular. Is that right? Yes, definitely. And they're just one of many that are available from our reference design library, some of which are shown here on our website at the link listed at the top of the slide. All right, Scott. So before we go, what would you like my audience to take away from today's Chalk Talk? Well, I guess as we're finishing up here, I just wanted to take a minute to cover some of the features of our reference designs. So they've been developed for some of the more popular and relevant automotive applications that are out there today, especially for electric and hybrid vehicles. They're available now through Mauser. Go there, take a look, and find any of these applications that I just showed. And all of the design files are downloadable for free. So that's the schematic, the bill of materials, the PCB layout, the mechanical step file, the Gerber files. And finally, I also wanted to mention, stay tuned for some new reference designs that will be released in the coming months. So we'll have these same intelligent battery shunts, but with a CAN bus interface. Uh, we'll also have an onboard battery charger, and then finally a high power traction inverter. So that's all I have for today. I hope it was interesting and useful. And thanks again for the opportunity to speak with you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining me, Scott. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from the Shea. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash EE Journal.